Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Black Belt for the Sega Master System. We are now in Chapter 3 after completing the first two chapters in the first video. We are now invincible, and we are now beating up some guys in red karate geese. En route to the mini boss. And the mini boss is most like the claw guy from Chapter 1. If you can believe it. Also, I love kicking these guys. They just come right at me. Anyway. Just like the claw guy from chapter one. You just want to keep moving back and forth. And when he super jumps, you want to kick him on the way down. That's it. From here, just keep on kicking the guys in the red geese. And you should be able to make it to the boss. Yes, there is only one mini boss in this chapter compared to the first two. And we've already made it to the boss. Gonta, a sumo wrestler. You want to super jump over him when he charges at you. And when he does, this, does the punches, you just want to back up, jump kick forward, back up, jump kick forward, and just keep on doing this. If he does nothing, he's ready to supercharge again, so you better be ready to super jump over him. He can also do this rep repetitive jump attack where he just makes tall, skinny hops from one side of the screen to the other. If he does that, you can walk under him, punch him while he's in the air, and just stay behind him as he jumps all the way to the other side of the screen. And as you keep punching him and standing near him as he does this, he'll just hop in place when he can't go anywhere. And you can keep punching him until he, until his uh, health meter stops going down. And when that happens, you back off, you move forward, you punch him. Even though I finish him off with a jump kick, it doesn't really matter. If you use a standing punch or a jump kick, you'll finish him off. Anyway, chapter four. Had to pause real quick so that, that way I didn't get attacked by ninjas while trying to explain things. New enemy here, the Hawks. You can easily move under them if you know what you're doing, regardless of what side of the screen you're coming in from. Just watch for them. They'll either come in from the left or from the right. But it's pretty easy to dodge them nonetheless. Which I do like. You can jump up and kick them. And now, the whip guy. You want to give yourself some distance. Then you want to jump kick him. And you want to cue that until he dies. If you get too close, he will hit you with the whip multiple times. It will take off a good chunk of energy, I would think. And I got hit by a hawk there, but that's okay. And there's going to be another guy, rather two guys, with swords. You want to back off and kick, kick them, too. And you want to focus on one guy at a time. If you can do that, you can easily take care of the other guy. Once again, get some distance, jump forward at him, jump kick, you should be good. Though I lost more health than I probably would have wanted to right there. Thankfully, those two guys with the swords are the last mini-boss, so all we really have to worry about is facing the Chapter 4 boss, who is coming right up. Oni is a guy in a mask. Go all the way to the left, start kicking. When you kick at him, he will punch you. Kick him immediately after he crouch punches you. You will lose health, but he goes down before you do. Because... He dies when his health goes to zero, exactly, while you have to go below zero to die. 
Yeah, that's right. We both went to zero, but Oni dies at exactly zero while I have to have negative health to die. And now, chapter five, which will be in the next video. Join me next time where I take on chapters five and six. It's not going to get any easier. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!